I was with you guys, Russ and Ron, um, I believe that the story's all true, the day at the El Rey interviewing you guys in the lobby um, before that show. And I believe that was the night this all came together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The uh, El Rey when uh, Edgar, I believe that was the, the one where Edgar had brought up the idea of, uh, of doing something together. Yeah, doing a documentary about the band and we were kind of what and uh you know and here we are three years later or whatever it's been and uh and it's and it's now almost out did you know well, right away this was all going to work because there's been so much talk of doing things with you guys for years and you guys have either been res reticent so many projects did that night with edgar your enthusiasm or what you guys saw in edgar as a director did you know this was going to be different this was going to be something special well, we love we love Edgar's films. You know, we we're a big fan of his films. So, so we thought if this can actually happen, I mean, we we're in the best hands possible. We we feel there's a real kinship, um, you know, aesthetically with what Edgar does with his films and what Sparks does with our music. I mean, you can't you can't say exactly what that is, but there's a there's kind of a tone to to what, what Edgar does and what we do. And we felt that the sensibilities were really in sync with, with each other. And if there ever was to be a documentary about the band, we couldn't have asked for a better person to direct, to direct that. Because we had been hesitant in the past, you know, hoping that a documentary doesn't kind of represent an obituary for, for a band, you know, what you're doing. And, and well, thank you, here's your gold watch. And, uh, you know, see you later. And, and kind of Edgar's whole approach to the documentary was completely opposite of that, that he wanted to stress the entire career with kind of equal bits of every, every era, whether they're highs in the career, or lows in the career for various reasons or albums that kind of seeped under the, under the radar, but they were all relevant in a certain way leading up to the present. And um, so with that kind of approach and with his style, that was the other thing we were always, you know, kind of joking about just saying, God, we hope, I hope this is going to look like an Edgar Wright film in the end, because we, we like his film so much. We hope this wasn't going to be the outlier where it's, uh, oh, it's his boring, dull documentary, you know, done in a completely, with a completely different aesthetic from the rest of his films. But we were so happily uh we should we weren't surprised we were hoping it would be that anyway but we were so happy when we saw the results of it that it does in fact look like an edgar wright film and edgar when you took this on and they said yes what was the first step how how, how did you know how willing they were going to be to share their lives with you were you nervous what was the next step i think um it was uh, i mean the full chronology of the um, the El Rey night was that for like months before that night, I'd been sort of like saying out loud that somebody should do a documentary about Sparks. I hadn't necessarily thought that I should do it, but I sort of said somebody has to do it. And it was at that night I was with the director Phil Lord, and I said again like my 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 spiel at this point, which was like. Ah, oh, you know, Sparks are the greatest, most influential band that don't have a documentary about them. And so many other bands who are lesser have documentaries and somebody's got to make that movie and make the overview that will like, you know, make everybody who doesn't know who Sparks are see like how amazing they are. And Phil was looking at me and just said, you should make the movie. And I was like, yeah, I will. So then, but then as soon as I'd said it out loud to Ron and Russell, then it's like a vocal contract and a promise that I'm not going to renege on. So then after that really was like, I'm, the next person I mentioned it to was my producer, Naira Park, and said, hey, I want to do a documentary about Sparks. So this was the first she heard of it. And then it was like we, MRC, who financed Baby Driver, was starting a documentary division. So they agreed to finance it. And then, and then it was a sort of process of like, what is it going to be? What are we going to focus on? And, and I sort of quickly came onto the idea of like, I want to tell an oral history because I can interview Ron and Russell and that's amazing. But then there's other people kind of like thoughts on Sparks are all valid. And, and I wanted to sort of create an equivalence in the movie between 
celebrity like rock star fans who were fans of the band who then went on to be hugely successful or like somebody that was a, a stage invader age 12 at a concert in 1975 and hear her story and i kind of figure that sparks are sort of a band that have been going for so long and have touched people in different ways at different times that there was no like um right or wrong opinion of sparks and there's no story big or, you know no story too small to feature and i thought that was a way like to show that like the story of the band but so the story of the band is the centerpiece but then at the start it's like where did they come from and like what effect did they have on the rest of the world and so that was really the idea so i started keeping it together in that sense and and a lot and ron if you can talk about this a lot of this movie elicited emotion in me mostly first it was stuff with your parents which was very touching to see and then there was everything you guys had to go through as a band but i was just getting emotional watching this just because so much care and attention was from edgar was put on you guys just did you feel that love throughout the filming was that because you guys haven't sought that type of attention what did that feel like during the process well we you know we we did but i mean we had faith that that would be the outcome you know but but just to just to know that he was treating this not as some kind of little uh, throwaway project you know just was so you know so heartwarming to us because um you know just that, that he was treating it seriously and not you know not 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 in the tone of the film but just as it, from his passion and that that really meant a lot to us but we we kind of we knew that because we knew what he was as a filmmaker and that if he's going to do a film he's going to do a film and so so you know that that was sort of but you never you know you never know i guess and and so when we finally got to see the the final cut you know it was it was just extraordinary I mean, our our greatest disappointment is just that we weren't able to be in the same room seeing the documentary on a big screen but that hopefully that day will will come soon yeah very soon i think the campaign's been wonderful for this film to a lot of people you're a new amazing band right now the commercial spots have been great what's that attention like for you guys now at this point in your career to feel that freshness, to feel that newness, to feel like, and I'm sure in a lot of ways, you are just beginning with this. It's kind of crazy that um, 25 albums in now, we're, we're sort of uh, getting this new uh, new gust of wind behind us, um, which is, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it probably wouldn't have needed that, but it, but it, but it's um, kind of ironic that it, that, both, you know, Edgar's documentary and then the upcoming Annette film, both sort of hitting right around the same time. And then we're also starting a new album or we're in the middle of doing a new album. And then we have touring uh, plans for, for next year for end of February and a big tour around America, 17 shows and stuff. So, and so we're kind of really, I think, invigorated uh, beyond even what we might've been just by, um, all of this activity that's going on now and it couldn't have been better in a, a certain way. It kind of uh, keys us up to kind of even want to do, you know, more stuff, more, you know, creative output that, that is, you know, pushing things as much as we can. Cause it kind of helps to, to uh, give you some sort of uh, vindication of what you've done in a, in a certain way and pushes you to, to try to even, not then rest on your laurels anymore, but kind of continue to to be as um, uncompromising in in what you do. So all of the things that have sort of come together at this point are are uh, you know it's really uh, uh, encouraging for us and really motivating for us. I love seeing commercials like in the middle of Billboard Awards. I'm getting calls because people know I'm a Sparks. <laughs> <laughs> There's a commercial for Sparks on Channel Seven. Did you see that? I mean, been fun for you guys to have that kind of thing going on oh yeah yeah we were we uh we saw them as well and it's it's like hearing your your one of your songs on the radio for the first time and there we are uh seeing commercials for a a movie about us on television and so that you know it's it's it was it's pretty amazing and seeing it an edgar wright film the sparks but you know on it's 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 pretty amazing and edgar you so beautifully parts of this film touched on 
their artistic integrity and the, and the creative integrity and those years where maybe we weren't seeing product, but you guys were always working and always creating on a daily basis, it sounded like. What were those years like on the inside for you guys? What were those like? Were those tough years or were you guys in, enjoying the craft and enjoying making music and knowing there will be something next? Well, that, I mean, that whole, the whole period that was touched on where there was kind of less, um, less material visible to the outside world. Um, you know, we, we were working incredibly hard, even through all of that, we were working on that project, my, the psychic girl for maybe longer than we should have been devoting our full attention to it because in the end it didn't kind of materialize you know, in, in its production and release. And so, but we were working incredibly hard on that. And there is a, a full uh, movie musical waiting there uh, if Tim Burton never uh, <laughs> comes around to it and looks at his, through his Rolodex of films in production, in pre-production that he has, it still, it still exists. And so, I mean, we never thought about that period any probably a lot differently than any other period because we were still really active even though in the public side there there wasn't a lot to to be seen by them or heard at that at that time so um i mean it's kind of sort of the case with most of our careers we kind of in a certain way have blinders on and we just steam ahead and we control the things that we can control and everything that's sort of outside of that area we we there's nothing we can do about it really other than the motivating thing for people outside of Sparks Worlds that can kind of help us is when we come up with something creative and tangible that they can then react to and say, oh, I like this I, uh, and I want to release it or do something like that. But unless we're kind of being productive, uh, nothing would happen. And so that's why we uh, continue to push it through thick and thin. And how wonderful is that message of perseverance that you hope audiences are left with. If you guys can talk about that, any of you, what that means to you, what you hope audiences take away from that message. Well, I would hope actually that, and this is something that kind of wasn't necessarily like planned because, uh, but obviously the pandemic has kind of made it tougher than ever for musical artists because prior to the pandemic, you know, like uh, a lot of bands were having to exist by playing live that they weren't making the same money from the actual music and the, the live work was the sole source of income. And then that went away. So I would like hope that, you know, anybody in a creative profession would see the documentary and, and understand that there's like, there's always a way forward. And I think what sort of like Ronald Russell proved in that period where maybe they're not existing as sparks as much that there's kind of, you know, ways to sort of like, conduct yourself so that you can still create. And I, I thought that was always really impressive and inspiring to me that Ron and Russell figured out a way that they could still be sparks, but not have to answer to anybody. And it's a big sort of like gamble to take, um, but it's one that's obviously just paid off because I think otherwise you, you know, like to me, like there's, I, I'm sure a lot of people in the music industry would watch the documentary and spot like six or seven points where other bands would have broken up but that just didn't happen. And it's a testament to kind of the resilience. So I, I, I would just hope that people would find it really inspiring. What's it like now being fully immersed in the cinematic world big time this year? It just must be a dream come true for you guys on so many levels. You just put into words between this and, and the opening of Can, which is amazing for anybody. What does that feel like? Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, it, it, it you know, we've, we've been, you know, film, uh, immersed in film, even you know when we were very young, it's kind of covered in the documentary where we were taken to films by our by our parents, and then at university, it was part of the coolness of being one of the cool kids at, at UCLA at that time was not only liking the British bands but liking French New Wave cinema and Bergman and and Ozu and Misaguchi and all, and and then you know just just to then we we kind of felt you know just a, a passion for trying to incorporate what we were, we did musically with film with first with with uh, Jacques Tati and then with with the Tim Burton 
project. So to actually, after all of this time, have have that happen, it's it's surreal uh, and almost like uh, how did this happen? Kind of because you know we were so used to those kind of disappointments, but um, we're we're very fortunate because there are other people that have the same kind of uh, stick to itness that that we have against kind of all all odds if they believe in something. And so you know it's it's just it's just really uh, it's just amazing. Thank you for watching. If you want more extra, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video.